Hi guys, um, we're going to talk a little bit about celestial navigation. Um, how the heck do you navigate out in space? Um, how does Captain Picard find his way around? Or how does Doctor Who figure out where he's going? Whenever I watch Doctor Who, I'm always wondering, how does he know how to get from here to there? Yeah, very complicated stuff. So when we start talking about celestial navigation, the challenge is that everything is in motion. Um, the Earth is going around the Sun. The Sun is orbiting around the, the center of the Milky Way galaxy. And it's complicated. So how the heck do you pinpoint a star or a planet or anything in outer space? From ancient time, um, and we will talk about history more in the future, it was assumed that the Earth was surrounded by something that they referred to as the celestial sphere. Well, the celestial sphere, of course, is not true. Um, we are not inside of a big crystal ball. But the stars are so very, very, very far away that they look like they are not moving from our perspective. I always kind of equate it if you're driving down a road towards a mountain range um, and the mountains are a long way in the distance, very often it looks like you're not getting any closer and you drive for 20 minutes and the mountains look the same size. And that's because the distance is so incredibly huge. Well, that's kind of how it works with a celestial sphere. This is a background of stars and we use that background of stars as a reference point. But of course, we know that there is motion in the stars. They are moving, but they happen at incredibly large distances and their motions are very, very slow in a human lifespan. One of the things that's real interesting about constellations is that constellations are patterns that we see in the night sky. And I want you to understand that the individual stars in one constellation can be many, many light years apart. For example, this is the asterism, the Big Dipper, in Ursa Major. And if from our position on Earth, if it's little old you sitting on Earth looking at those stars, they are tremendously far apart. Um, there is Debe, which is 105 light years away, Murak, which is 78 light years away, and then you have Alcade, 210 light years away. So from another perspective, in another solar system, you're not going to see the same constellations. So if you ever get abducted by aliens, you'll look out in the night sky and hopefully it won't look the same. Then maybe, if it does, you might still be on Earth. So back to this idea of celestial navigation. We use the celestial sphere as a point of reference. Okay, that's fine. There's this background of stars out there that we're referring to when we try and locate something in space. But what units do we use? Does it make sense to measure things in feet, in miles? I mean, how do you say that there is a star right there? Well, based on the idea that all of the stars around us look like they are surrounding us in a big sphere or ball, the navigation system that we have chosen to use, astronomers use, are very similar to what navigators on boats have been using for hundreds and hundreds of years. And that's the concept of latitude and longitude. Now, we do not use latitude and longitude out in space, but the celestial navigation system that we do use is very similar to it. So let's back up and review what you may or may not remember about latitude and longitude. Any geographic point on the Earth can be given by a combination of latitude and longitude. Um, if you call somebody on the cell phone, every cell phone on the planet has built into it a GPS receiver so that the right tower gets pinged and the radio signal can be sent to that right person. Um, that is totally based on the concept of latitude and longitude. Now latitude are the lines that are parallel to the equator. These are lines that if the equator goes across the earth like a big belt, um, lines of latitude go from the equator north to the North Pole and then from the equator south to the South Pole. The equator itself is zero latitude. The North Pole is 90 degrees latitude. And you and I, living where we are, we are just about 
45 degrees latitude. Not exactly, but pretty darn close. Longitude are lines that run from the North Pole to the South Pole. Um, the, how I was taught to keep these straight is that longitude lines are very long. They are going all the way from the North Pole to the South Pole. There are 360 degrees in any circle. And so when the map makers were first dividing up the Earth, they broke the sphere of the Earth into 360 lines of latitude, excuse me, lines of longitude in order to mimic the 360 degrees in a circle mathematically. If you go one quarter way around the Earth, it is a 90 degree swing. So 90 degrees away is kind of where we are on, on planet Earth. 180 degrees is the international dateline on the back side of the Earth. And then the 270th uh, line of longitude somewhere in Asia. When they were choosing these lines of longitude, um, the equator there was for latitude there was a natural point they they chose they said for latitude let's call the earth the equator of the earth zero and we'll go up 90 degrees and we'll go down 90 degrees that's how it worked for latitude but for longitude when you have these lines that are running north and south on the big ball called earth what are you going to call zero well there is no natural point to begin. And so they chose, the map makers chose their home. And the people who actually invented longitude were from the British maritime uh, seafaring lands in the 1800s, and they picked their home, and their home was the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England. Now, this is actually a picture of the Royal Observatory in Greenwich, England. Um, there is a a, a door in a building and this line that comes out happens to be zero degrees longitude and you can see the same door in this picture down here and this right here do 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 that happens to be the reference point zero degrees longitude so it was chosen arbitrarily they kind of said home you know we're going to call home zero and we're going to me measure everything from there now, let's talk about some latitudes and longitudes to hopefully make some sense out of this. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're not currently in Milwaukee, not unless you're listening to this online. Milwaukee, Wisconsin has a latitude of about 43 degrees north and about 88 degrees west. So the prime meridian, which is that zero line of longitude, is in Greenwich, England, and England's way over here. If you go about, not quite, a quarter of the way around the planet, you're going to be to almost 90 degrees west longitude. And if you go up from the equator, not quite 45 degrees, right in there, boop, that's where you're going to find Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We happen to live in a very interesting part of the country because if you ever travel on Highway 29, which actually goes out of Eau Claire and uh, goes east towards Wausau. There is a little town called Ponatowski. Ponatowski is right there. Now, why in the world am I measure, mentioning Ponatowski, Wisconsin? If you travel Highway 29, there is a sign that says geological marker and then an arrow. Well, in my past, I've made my family stop at all these sort of things because I'm kind of nerdy. And there is this thing right here. It is actually a plate in the ground. And that plate marks the point where 90 degrees north latitude, I said that wrong, 45 degrees north latitude and 90 degrees north longitude happen to meet. And that happens to be right at Panatowski. So it's you're halfway between the um, equator and the North Pole and halfway between Greenwich, England and the International Dateline on the backside. Latitude and longitude remain the same for every point on planet Earth. So it doesn't matter where you are. If you are located 
in Europe, you're located in South America, you're located in North America, the latitude and longitude of one point always remains the same. And that's why it can be used by GPS and things like that. Now, why the heck do I have a picture of Angelina Jolie? Angelina Jolie has uh, tattooed on her arm a collection of latitudes and longitudes. So do you know why and what they represent? Yeah, they happen to be all of her children, some that she has given birth to, many that she has adopted. And I have rumors heard that one of those latitudes and longitudes represents the birthplace of Brad Pitt. And I wonder, yeah, hence the challenge of tattooing anything on your arm when the relationship breaks up. But, oh well, that's the way it goes. The celestial equator. Um, as we start talking about celestial navigation, we measure things from the celestial equator. Now, the celestial equator is an extension of the Earth's equator out into space. So if we take the Earth's equator and we send it out into space, so it's sort of like if the Earth and you put a, a paper plate around it all the way around, it's a flat plane that goes out, kind of like Saturn's rings outward from the Earth. It's not a real thing, it's a point of reference, and that is called the celestial equator. Again, we use it as a point of reference. The celestial poles are extensions of the Earth's north and south pole. So the Earth's equator outward is called celestial equator. The Earth's north and south poles um, extended outward into space are called the north celestial pole and the south celestial pole. When you and I are lying anywhere and sitting any place on planet Earth directly above our head, that is referred to as the zenith. The zenith is the point directly above the observer's head. Now, the term zenith in astronomy also has another meaning. Um, if you are watching a star as it goes across the sky during an evening, when the star is at its highest point, that star is also at its zenith. So unfortunately, one word, two meanings point directly above your head and the highest point for a star, both of those are meanings that are used in astronomy. And I think that will start, we will end the video right there and we'll come back for another time. See you later.